Well, hello, that's me again. Today is October 17th, 2024. It is Tuesday. And before I proceed with anything, I am getting a little bit irritated. And, well, I understand people are different. And you know what? I encounter very often, actually, that's why I'm irritated. You know, one once in a while, far in between comments about articles of clothing are fine. But when people begin to constantly, and including in private, like, oh my God, you wear the uh, you know Caterpillar T-shirt. Okay, I wear Caterpillar T-shirt because my dear friend owns a construction company and he sent me this. And has nothing to do with the support of Caterpillar. Okay, today I obliged because evidently, as it turned out, I'm wearing politically incorrect or ideologically not pure uh, T-shirt. So here it is. You want this? So there you go. This is politically neutral, albeit, I don't know, maybe I will be charged with the, some, you know, uh, copyright violations with the obviously wonderful minions. But truth is, this is absolute truth. Need coffee? That's my practically, you know, uh, every, uh, everyday normal state of mind and physical requirements. I just need coffee. And yeah, after that, after I'm done uh, doing this here, I will go and get myself another latte, you know, 20 ounce. So there you go. So I think so we take, uh, you know, uh, get this out of the way, uh, finally. So don't, uh, you know, look at what I'm wearing. I have no messages, okay? I mean, there's no, I'm not some kind of the, you know, what, uh, high level mainstream media, you know, anchor woman or man to wear specific things to convey some kind of message, you know, through this. It's all BS, you know, I'm just wearing what is comfortable. So usually I prefer to wear something which is not very bright, but hey, need coffee, you know what, uh, interpret it any way you want, including uh, if you want to support me, buy me a coffee or two or ten, sure, I'll be happy. So there you go, that's it for today about this. But let's uh, start as you saw yourself uh, in the beginning, uh, and uh, I want to make sure that we're really on the uh, same wavelengths here, and I will kind of touch upon it down there um, in this video, you will see yourself the Krasnoyarsk uh, and Barrier class strategic missile submarine and uh, guided missile submarine uh, transferring themselves from the Northern Fleet to the Pacific Fleet in the framework within the framework of the Okean 2024, uh, uh, you know, strategic naval exercise together with China. But I'll touch on this uh, in a few minutes. But let's start with well. I am sorry to say this, of course, and uh, how to put it politely, I don't know how to put it politely. United States is becoming obviously a dictatorship. And a dictatorship in a sense that it's a little bit different dictatorship than when you have the uh, some kind of the, you know, dictator like Franco or, or Hitler, you know, but it's on its way there, and so we now have the second attempt on Mr. Trump. So, and while the United States is basically killing off whatever was left of the so-called the most democratic democracy in the world, and you have the complicit political forces and uh, obviously utterly corrupt uh, uh, American media in, uh, you know, spreading the hatred and uh, basically calling for assassination of Mr. Trump, we have the, of course, second attempt of uh, on Mr. Trump's life. Luckily, he is safe and sound, and evidently Secret Service did its uh, proper job there. But here's the guy, yeah, everybody talks about this guy, and if you go to the uh, New York Times, which uh, actually narrates sort of, you know, about this Mr. Ryan Roth or Ruth or whatever the hell uh, uh, about uh, him. Uh, as you can see yourself, it was two days ago. And they talk about that suspected gunman said he was willing to fight and die in Ukraine. Ryan Wesley Roth, uh, 58, told the New York Times in 2023 that he traveled to Ukraine and wanted to recruit Afghan soldiers to fight them. Uh, yes, and he is a symptom because you have a lot many not jobs 
And uh, American politics have been utterly Ukrainized, both in terms of the corruption and now the United States, well, it ran itself into the strategic dead end. It lost the war there, and it's now desperate in any kind, in any way to try to do something about it, including through this, you know, Ukrainian, you know, uh, lamb dogs, those people, you know, brainwashed those Nazis, and Washington loves Nazis, you know, look at throughout, uh, across the whole political spectrum, most of those people, not all, make no mistake, I'm not saying that, I'm not using the broad brush here to paint over everybody there, but they either are aloof or actively engaged in the support of the Nazis, especially people of the scale of, uh, you know, um, uh, Lindsey Graham and uh, Democrats are altogether invested in the war in Russia. They hate Russian gods. They want Russian dead children, women. Well, because most of them they are cowards, and most of them they don't understand what real war is. And so now they suddenly have to face this uh, situation, and situation on the front is extremely bad for the whatever is a remnants of the uh, armed forces of Ukraine. The all those you know volunteers. Uh, you know, quote unquote, if you know what I mean, especially from, you know, Great Britain, United States, Poland, they ran away, they fled. And I already spoke about it. They do not have a good staying power in real conflict. And so what can I say? They are good only at shooting the into backs of the retreating Ukrainian troops, which is, uh, how to put it politely, I, it's not even slaughter, it's something else altogether. And so they now face this whole political talk, which, you know, brought up, you know, this issue with Ukraine in 2013, 2014, obviously through by means of Victoria Nuland and this cabal of neocons, which really dominates America's foreign policy and corrupted it utterly, leaving no morality, no integrity, no humanity in it. So, and uh, let's take a look at what we have in this case uh, with in Ukraine today. So we can go with our losses and as you can see yourself uh, just today the harvest is this green harvest is really horrendous uh, 2360 uh, well it's pretty much KIAs and especially when you take a look at attention uh, what passes for the missing in action in Ukraine so yeah the number is horrendous and so we have another 50 plus 28 uh, 78 pieces of equipment wiped out so and uh, you know I'm how to put it? Uh, obviously, I have the, the well, pretty battalions of the all kinds of the fanboys uh, who cannot live uh, from United States, who cannot live uh, with the fact that you know uh, the United States have been paraded uh, as the you know combined arms uh, paper tiger, uh, and the technology have been completely discredited. Uh, but I also have detachments from the from Ukraine who follow me all over the place, and they start you know. B b uh, writing all kinds of the stupid uh, comments, which is fine. I do not, uh, you know, uh, do anything about my discussion boards. I do not moderate them. People are free to say whatever they want. Uh, it's uh, if anybody has any issues that some their comments disappear, it's not me. I don't erase uh, comments. Most likely it's some kind of, you know, algorithm on YouTube. But the point is that people ask me uh, some stupid guy comes up and says, oh, look at these tanks. They are, you know, painted white with this, this, like Russian. No, they not. So if you cannot explain the T-64s, which are painted with the markings, white markings of the armed forces of Ukraine, and they are either destroyed or has been, uh, have been abandoned, uh, I don't know how even to explain it to, to those people, but this is what is happening. So they try to fight the reality, the same as Washington does now. Uh, practically, Pentagon fights the reality. They all fight reality because otherwise, if they face it, it it's going to be a complete collapse and it will accelerate dramatically it is already uh, ongoing so if you take a look now of what is happening with this um, how to put it politely uh, adventure in um, 
Kursk area. You can see yourself. This is a map for today. Well, it's really not a map. It's you have to keep in mind. I will explain again why it is not a map. And uh, but uh, in, in those grayish areas, you know, the brownish grayish areas, which you can see yourself. These are the areas of Russian troops uh, closing what was inevitable in this situation, which is of course cauldron. In Novaya Ivanovka is there. So and they're gonna be obliterated in this cauldron and they constantly ask for you know beg really for them being substituted or replaced but the problem is now they cannot get in inside the uh, Kursk Oblast because any force or any reserve which is being uh, you know even moved closer immediately obliterated by the uh, operations of the Russian uh, VKS which is aerospace forces and long-range fires so and then we have the situation with the Ugledar uh, and as you can see yourself, uh, also, Ugledar, uh, here is the uh, cauldron which is being closed in the Ugledar. And again, these are merely um, uh, uh, schemes. These are not really maps. They're just overall average, uh, you know, schemes of the average movement. Uh, we can take a look at the situation with the more detail and how it is properly uh, portrayed, if you wish, uh, through our friend Marat Hairul. And here is your Ugledar situation. As you can see yourself, it is much more... Um, uh, complex in terms of the forces and these are what staffs do they identify the forces uh, of the enemy as you can see yourself Russians are already attacking towards Konstantinopolska and as you can see yourself also here there will be actually a larger cauldron uh, in the uh, Ugledar area uh, because if you can see yourself from Bogoyavlinka Russians are turning to the south and uh, 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 going to be obliterating their uh, uh, grouping or uh, to Groups grouping there, so you can see yourself. It's classic movements, you know, operational level movements on uh, this uh, axis, and uh, yeah, it, those uh, they don't have much left, you know, in terms of their life. They will be obliterated too. And so now we have the situation with Tereyesk, as you can see yourself since yesterday, oh, today, since yesterday, you see those red shaded areas, the movement continues uh, towards uh, main, uh, both urban area and towards the uh, ro main roads there. So it's also the done deal is just a matter of how fast Russians want or Russian forces want to finish this off. And this is uh, just absolutely normal. And I want to show you back again there are losses thing you know the table you see the stable do you see the highlighted in yellow and underlined in red uh, name of the site it is called MS, uh, mskvremia.ru. So people ask constantly, several times uh, under each video, what is the, you know, where is this, uh, you know, tables you take from? Well, there you go. It is a very famous site, and you can go there, you can turn on the uh, translate to uh, English uh, option uh, in the whatever the browser you use, and there you go. Go there and see yourself for Ukraine losses and the schemes of the maps. So basically, there is no secret where it is all coming through or from. So this is uh, the deal with the issue, of course, of the special military operation. And um, I understand. I wish I, would, I brought you better news. But you know what? As I already stated uh, many times, my task is deliver information and Try to turn it into knowledge for you, or you may, you know, come up with your own method, so to speak, of accepting this information and processing it. So, uh, but in, in the end, it has to turn into knowledge. Information on by uh, in itself is not a knowledge. It's just basically data. Only when data is processed, you get the knowledge. That actually applies everywhere, from the uh, industrial management to uh, uh, prosecution of, uh, of the war and things of this nature. So, and I want to start uh, this uh, segment with this. Um, uh, here is the military thought. 
as you can see yourself, September 2024. It is the main uh, publication, as you can see yourself up there. I underlined it in the uh, red that it is for generals, admirals, and officers of the armed forces of Russian Federation. Obviously, CIA and all DIA and all those people, you know, in the United States, they read it. And this is important. Obviously, it's the part of the what is called open source intelligence. Vienna missile is the famous publication. But but yes, its academic level is primarily designed for people with the serious military background. Not some BS when they go through and, you know, get into whatever, you know, some kind of the uh, course of preparation into some kind of the Ivy League uh, national security studies or things like that. But it's for people who have serious professional military background. And so here we have now a very interesting article uh, by... Uh, uh, Admiral uh, Moiseev, who is the, obviously the commander-in-chief of the Russian Navy. And the article called is Strategic Requirements for the Development of the Naval Potential of Russia with the Consideration of the Experience of the Special Military Operation in Ukraine. Uh, as you can see yourself, because it is an open uh, publication, they also give the abstracts in uh, English language because they understand uh, people in Washington read them. And Washington, Washington only matters in this matter, but, you know, they read it obviously in Germany, in London, in elsewhere. In this paper, as they say, uh, is abstract, in this paper, based on the assessment of the military and political situation in the world and the forecast of its development and troops of the Navy in the special military operations in Ukraine, they mean primarily Marines, the nature and uh, peculiarities of the tasks to be solved, the priority directions of development and construction of the Navy in regional, strategic direction and specific and adjusted. It's kind of, you know, uh, machine translated thing, but but yeah, you will understand that um, uh, Admiral Maiseev, uh he speaks about what is going to happen, with, you know, against the background of the whole situation with the special military operation and increasing desperation from the United States, which is ready to go to any kind of stupid things because, you know what, and again, the um, political system in the United States is doomed. I mean, everything what we knew about the United States is over, and some of it is already clearly over, others are coming, no matter who wins those elections, and I'm not sure that uh, the necessarily military dictatorship is coming, but again, when you look at Nancy at U.S. military today, my God, anyhow, the, so we have this situation, and uh, b because I cannot uh, machine translate it through the... <clears throat> Uh, the tool, which there is no tool which can translate this uh, type of the JPEGs, but here it is. Uh, here is the uh, some key points Mr. Maiseev uh, describes, especially against the uh, fact that Russia, by uh, officially increased by 180,000 the number of the servicemen in the uh, armed forces uh, of Russia, and it's now second largest military in the world. And uh, as Mr. Putin. Uh, you know, uh, uh, signed the ordinance two days ago. Now he's talking about massive strategic talk, obviously, that uh, Russian Navy has to, you know, deal the uh, damage or the uh, critical damage of the enemy, uh, no less than critical. So that means what? It's either it becomes completely incapable or it's completely sunk. And he is talking about surprise, surprise, about non-strategic nuclear weapons. And he talks about that this is one of the indicators of the effectiveness of the measures on the realization of the state uh, policy in the uh, uh, naval uh, uh, activity. And he is talking about increasing the uh, potential of Russian Navy by s dramatically without even increased, uh, increasing the uh, number of the ships. Although obviously ships are being built and Russia is increasing the number of the ships. What does he mean by that? Oh, he means very simple thing. He won, not once, it's going to happen, it's probably already happening. He, understanding what is happening in the United States, with which the country completely 
completely went off the rails. There are no normal people left with whom you can talk anything about it. So he's talking about the return to 1990 and return of the nuclear warheads to the brand new delivery systems, which of course are advanced uh, anti-shipping and other types of the missiles ranging from the famous 3M14 and M caliber to, of course, Zircon and Onyx. They are all capable. And look what he said. Together with the uh, missile, uh, um, the boomers, together with the strategic missile submarines, the, uh, the tasks of the nuclear containment could be conducted by the, you know what, the surface and, well, generally sea forces of the conventional uh, designation. Well, which are... They, they are designed for the strategic non-nuclear containment. And so he says, you know what, hey, why don't we return those non-strategic uh, 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 nuclear weapons? And make no mistake, when people think that's oh, tactical or non-strategic, uh, it means merely that it will be used in the non-strategic purposes. And for example, it has nothing to do with its, uh, for example, if we come down to the uh, 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 equivalent, uh, so, what can I say, you know, what, a TNT equivalent, uh, it could be something which on the order of comparable to the strategic uh, uh, systems, but they will be used in the non-strategic uh, mode. And so he talks about that there is no doubt that for the selective uh, use of the, you know, uh, nuclear, non-strategic nuclear weapon is, of course, the marine environment because the, you can uh, defeat or destroy the military objects uh, in their um, remote from the shore and peaceful population areas of the world ocean. As an example, uh, carrier battle groups. And it doesn't bring the mass death of the civilian population and it has minimum uh, ecological consequences. And so those and the selective use of the non-strategic uh, nuclear weapons uh, in, on the sea reduces the risks of the transition of the military conflict into the uncontrollable process of the massive use of the strategic missile, uh, you know, strategic weapons. So, and he is talking about, yeah, about conventional forces. There you go. Simple as that. Why spend five zircons, for example, to sink a carrier battle group? Pardon me for this, uh, I mean, pretty grim uh, scenario. When you can use two or one with, let's say, 500 kiloton or 350 kiloton, uh, uh, you know, warhead. But Zircon, Onyx, 3M54, 3M14 missile, all are capable of carrying uh, nuclear weapons. All Russian anti-shipping missiles always have been capable of doing this, including that, uh, uh, obviously, Kinjal is from the get-go, is uh, created as the one of the systems of the delivery of the uh, nuclear weapons. And then, of course, we uh, look at the, for example, KH-32, which is a terrifying missile, which is launched from the uh, strategic uh, bombers. Um, and guess what? When we look at attentively at Okean 2024 or Ocean 24 strategic uh, um, uh, uh, naval maneuvers, which have been uh, wrapped up today, uh, you will see yourself that the elements of this use, including the using of the uh, strategic missile carrying aviation, have been part of this, uh, you know, <clears throat> exercise. It was in the uh, legend, what is called legend, uh, scenario of those exercises, together with the Chinese uh, comrades. If so, go out there, take a look at the, those videos. This is impressive, honestly. And of course, we have now the Emperor Alexander III strategic missile submarine and Krasnoyarsk uh, Yasin class uh, Project 885 uh, uh, SSGN carrying, yeah, those terrifying onyxes and uh, um, zircons now officially being. Uh, at the Pacific Fleet, they will take their, you know, birthing places in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kamchatka and in Vilyuchinsk. So, yeah, this was a part of the training. They went through, you know, underneath the uh, ice cap and arrived when 
they were needed for this, you know, exercise. So when you take a look at it, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty rational thing. I mean, my safe is absolutely correct. If you need to sink the carrier battle groups, if you do it in the middle of Atlantic, I mean, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Obviously, many people, and there will, there are, I'm pretty sure there are many environmentalists and people of this type of the, you know, the uh, brain, so to speak, who care care about this. Well, I'm sorry if the war starts. Uh, it's better to leave it, you know, on this level than, of course, you know, conduct the massive uh, strikes by strategic uh, weapons, and then yeah, that will be over for everybody, including the environment. But what do I know? So, and now we have the situation which, well, these are a little piece of news. And when I say there are reputational catastrophe for the US and NATO made weapons, I mean it. And look at this. Here is a very uh, interesting piece of news from yesterday, actually. Oh, no, not yesterday, a week ago. Pardon me. So, and according to Defense Arabic on September 9, 2024, uh, defense, uh, Iraqi Defense Minister uh, Tabit al Abbasi announced that he uh, the contract for the South Korean Chenjung M2 air defense missile system has been finalized and will be signed next week. According to the whatever the name, Heo Bayek Yoon, uh, I don't want to, you know, slaughter the uh, Korean names. The, the contract involves eight batteries of the system, also known as the Korean Patriot. And I will explain to you why it is not, and is expected to be worth around 3.5 uh, billion. And this marks another step in expanding South Korea defense expert in the Middle East. Well, I have immediately a uh, correction. So, and I understand there are many but hurt people and sore losers right now in uh, American military industrial complex and uh, in armed forces. And hey, I understand that. I know how hurtful it is, but this is the truth. First, anybody who calls this thing Korean Patriot, they're imbeciles for a simple reason that you already can see yourself from the launchers that they are not actually trained by rotating them under some angle. They have a clear cut vertical start. And then why you will say, uh, I'm saying that this is ridiculous and it's complete BS. Because if anything else, this is not Korean Patriot, it is Korean S350. Because even, and I will <laughs> tell you that, KMSAM is actually a South Korea medium-range surface-to-air missile system that was developed by the Agency for Defense Development with technical support from Almas Ante and Fakel based on technology from 9M96 missile used on S350 and S400 50 missile system. The radar itself is PISA, which is based on the radar from S400 and the fire command vehicle. The radar operates in the X band. You think so? This is uh, 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 Wikipedia, which gives you the wrong answers. Hey, hello. How about we go to the, this? Obviously, you know, the uh, global security.org. <laughs> and no, it wasn't with the help of Almasante, it was developed in. Russia by Okabe Almas with the assistance from those Samsung Thales, LIG, and all other guys. And it is based on the technology from 9M96 missile used on S350 and S400 missile systems. Uh, so whenever they say that it is Korean Patriot, that tells you the level of the butthurt. Patriot doesn't hold a candle to any short, uh, medium to long range missile systems of Russia. It's just even ridiculous to compare. Yes, uh, uh, first deputy commander of Russian uh, uh, VKS, which is the uh, uh, airspace forces, stated Patriot Pack 3 cannot defend itself, forget about defending anything else. And so this Korean complex actually is a Russian complex. You might not know this, but Korean army, South Korea, Army or Republic of Korea Army still operates battalion of T-80s. They have even T-72s. You know, so while T-72s are few of them, uh, in terms of T-80s, they have more than battalion. They have more like 35 or something like that. So uh, then uh, that tells you everything you need to know how 
what a garbage basically they uh, uh, tell you about the whole situation so yeah and by now i would say any uh, air defense system if it will be compared to patriot i would feel insulted you know and absolutely incensed by comparing to this uh, basically expensive junk which fails i mean it's miserable failure technological failure on part of the uh, american mi mi uh, military industrial complex and you cannot hide this anymore the same as you cannot hide that um, u.s army is incapable of fighting normal combat arms operations of large scale and yes that's when you have this article so they you know like mm, yeah that's it goes all around uh, places like oh yeah uh it's defense whatever the name of the another of those defense uh, sites uh, in their uh, english speaking internet and they say that america isn't ready for another war uh because it doesn't have the troops there's military rec recruiting crisis explained so some guys on september 1 start this good old you know uh um, pipe organ so to speak about that the united states doesn't have enough troops well it's true united states doesn't have enough troops the problem when they begin to explain why united states is not ready for other war those were not wars what united states fought especially in afghanistan which was the police uh, uh operation of the high intensity well coin i mean it's not uh, i mean people die of course there but it's nowhere near in intensity to the what is happening now special military operation and many people in u.s military are sitting with their jaws on the floor let's be very clear about it so now when they talk about troops correct it's not just troops however primarily as i already stated which they do not understand know those strategist people those professors like vlachas who teach so-called strategy whatever that is uh, people with a uh, you know background in anthropology seriously they teach strategy do they even know what quadratic equation is but the point is it is toe table of organization and equipment united states is behind for example russian armed forces by generation in terms of toe and there is no way in hell it can catch up in the nearest 20 years despite the fact that there are some money well yeah they will print money the problem is you cannot buy much anymore on that because we are talking about systemic uh, degradation of the industrial and scientific base and uh what can i say this is the truth and as such russians are not stupid they sit they see what is happening inside the united states and as it tries to yet again to kill their one of the candidates uh and obviously it's only naive people or people with a half brain will believe that it was the guy this what is his name ruth uh, he is obviously very uh easy to manipul manipulate it he's a classic uh basically product of the manipulation of the whatever the services intelligence services or maybe whatever the org they run behind the scenes in the united states trying to completely disintegrate the country because they don't know really what they, they know how to kill like like try to kill a presidential candidate and former president but in terms of running country they don't know crap actually and this is a sad reality and so when people say to me that oh yeah you know you just bring us on the bad news no i'm just bringing you the real uh, information and uh, obviously sometimes things feel, feel you know fall in, in between the cracks so to speak and what can i say it's my job to inform you and maybe form the basis for your knowledge and this is what i wanted to tell you today about and as always guys those who like what i do please subscribe to my channel and those who can afford please uh, support me on patreon or buy me a coffee on too you see yeah there you go i don't know and maybe i will change some other to some other t-shirts next time so this is it for today guys have a nice rest of the week and i'll talk to you later bye bye